what are the motions of the calcaneus? So first of all, I'd like you to just find your heel bone. So I have my foot model here. Your heel bone is this lovely character here. So it's pretty easy to find on yourself. It's just that big bone at the back of your foot. But what I want you to, to observe is the shape of it from the back. So this is the back of it. This is the inside of the foot, the big toe side. This is the pinky toe side. And can you just see how if you were to put this heel bone on any surface, which way would it tend to tip? It would probably tend to tip inwards like that. Just the shape of it. Look how lopsided it is. Look how little stuff there is on the inside edge and how it's just shaped to tip inwards. If you applied any sort of pressure on it, like gravity would just tend to naturally tip that heel bone in. So you'd be more on the inside edge and that would contribute to a pronated foot. So we, this is what I've said before, I think in a session is that we actually don't need muscles to pronate the foot. Gravity will do it for us. And it's by virtue of the lovely shape, the asymmetrical sort of shape that the calcaneus has. It's just biased to always tip inwards like that. So if we take the side view, remember side view is our sagittal plane. What does the calcaneus bone, this guy here, do in the sagittal plane? <clears throat> We're gonna name it the exact same way as we name the movement of the pelvis. So if this is the front, the anterior part, and this is the back, the posterior part, the calcaneus goes like this. Can you see it kind of tips? So the front goes down, and then you can tip it the other way where the front part is coming up off the floor. So down to the floor on the front end, then up off the floor on that front part of the calcaneus. So we name this when the front part goes down and forwards, just like the pelvis, an anterior tilt. And the opposite motion, if this front part goes up and back off the floor, we can call that a posterior tilt. There are some other terminology you can use to name calcaneal movement, but today we're going to keep it really synced up with what we know about pelvis and skull nomenclature of movement. So this is your anterior tilt, and this is your posterior tilt. And can you see how is the calcaneus anterior tilts, the arch lowers and we get our pronation of the foot? And then as that front edge comes up and back into a posterior tilt that lifts the arch up and then you have a more supinated foot. So that's our sagittal plane motion. Now, if we take this view from behind or from the front, this is our frontal plane, <clears throat> excuse me, going through puberty again. And so we already talked about how gravity would just naturally tend to collapse the heel bone more inwards, I'll try to do this without hiding it from you. This would be the natural movement we'd see, that tipping inwards motion. So if we call these hikes and drops, so it can tip in like that, and then it can tip to the outside edge. So remember, this is the inside edge, this is the outside edge, big toe side, pinky toe side. We can have that calcaneus dropping on the inside, hiking on the outside and then going the opposite way, hiking on the outside or hiking on the inside rather, dropping on the outside. So we're just gonna name these hikes and drops. And it's that side to side tilting. So you'll feel more pressure on the inside as the inside edge drops and then more pressure on the outside of the heel as the outside edge drops, that teeter-tottering action that we see in the frontal plane that your pelvis can also do. Now, from the rotational perspective, it's gonna be hard to show you here, but we're gonna look at rotation of this bone. You can name it right and left. So if this is the right, or sorry, this is the left foot, actually. If we rotate the calcaneus towards the big toe, that's actually a right rotation. And then this would be a left rotation. And it's probably mirrored on your camera. So it'll make more sense when you actually stand up on your feet and feel it. But we have a rotation to the right 
and a rotation to the left, just like your pelvis can do. Rotations right, rotations left. We also can name these internal and external. So if this is the big toe side, that would be the midline of your body. So if you rotate that calcaneus, this part of the front part of it, point it towards the midline, that's an internal rotation. And if you take the front part of the heel bone and go to the pinky toe side, that's an external rotation because it's going away from the midline of the body. So internal rotation, external rotation. 